recognize this? Yeah. That's my boy, St. Christopher. I want you to tell me what this is all about, and I want you to tell me right now. It's about a boy named Michael Clancy Nguyen. He's your grandson. You buy the kid a backpack, you take him on the merry-go-round. Both you guys as immigrants, what's got to stick together? So you be responsible for them. You take care of them, because I want nothing to do with you. Blame the boss for life's little distractions. Because, because I always stick up for him, and then he goes and he puts a stunt like this. Well, he didn't do that. You haven't put water in that radiator for weeks. So I didn't put water in the car. Don't you think he could cover for me once in a while? Oh, 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 oh. What's wrong? I, I busted my toe. I suppose you're going to tell me that's not his fault either. Well, of course it's not. You're the, you're the one that kicked the car. Don't you know how many times I've kicked that car? I've kicked that car a hundred times, never broke my toe. I tell you, it's him. He loves doing that to me. And I'm telling you, it's not the boss. <laughs> what else you got for me? You gonna strike me with lightning? That was the boss. Oh, oh well, what the heck? It's just a car, right? Um, when do we walk, John? Come on, nice day for a walk. Excuse me. Excuse me. Can you tell us how to get to Rose Court? Rose Court? Sure, I live at Rose Court. Yeah, well, if you're heading back that way, we can just tag along with you. Why, sure. I don't mind the company, eh? Hey, but uh, you younger fellow, I don't walk so fast no more, you know? Oh, that's all right. My friend isn't walking too fast lately, either. Uh, hey, come on. <laughs> My name is Guido. Guido Leggio. I'm uh, Mark Gordon. It's Jonathan Smith. How you doing? Hi. Ah, uh, California. <laughs> That's why me and my friend have moved out here, you know. The winters have got to be too much for us. When would you come out? Oh, five or six months ago. But, hey, you know, my friend's a wife, and she died. Everybody dies, so we come out to here. We live next door to each other, and we play cards, and we go to ball of games, and... Uh, and a stinker, what can I tell you? <laughs> you got any family out here? Nah. Oh, I have a wife, but she run away with the capitan of the bull and the team. <laughs> Shame, too, because after he left, the, the whole team go to... <laughs> I met you, that guy had a two-ton average, too. <laughs> well, hey, here we are, Rosa Court. So, well, what's the building you need? Number 14. 14? Well, that's my building. Oh, who are you looking for? Mr. Michael Clancy? But that's my friend. That's the guy I talk about. Hey, who are you guys? What's going on here? No, no, nothing's going on. We just want to talk to him. That's all. Yeah? Uh, you guys are cops, lawyers? Come on, what'd he do? I killed that bum. No, no, he didn't do anything. Ah, you see? No, do nothing. 
death. I know that guy for 40 years. He's salt of the earth. Mr. Legio, we're with the International Refugee Relief Committee. Oh, you're looking for donation. Eh, well, eh, it's no good, the boys, because these are the biggest, cheapest skate around. Really, we just want to talk to him. Refugees, eh? All right, then come on. Look, I'm going to go up and talk to him first. Maybe I'll squeeze a couple of bucks out of him. In the meantime, you put to me down for 15 bucks, because I know what it's like to be a refugee, you know? Hey. Hey, where are you, sir? In the kitchen. Hey, what are you doing in the kitchen? We're in a tap dancing. What do you think I'm doing in the kitchen? I'm making dinner early so we can see the game. But the, tonight's my night to cook. Uh, and that's why I go to the store. Tuesday's my night to cook. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. You know. I cook on a Wednesday. Here, here. Tuesday, see? Tuesday. Wednesday. Where's Wednesday? Here, get your glasses. I don't Where's need my glasses? glasses. What's this from, today? Wednesday. What's this here? Yeah, see, yesterday's a paper. Today's a Wednesday. I thought it was Tuesday. Eh, hey, boy, you're gonna be the poster boy for the Alzheimer's disease, you know? So I thought it was Tuesday. Who won the game? The Dodgers, they lost it. Yeah, those bums, what do you expect? They can't even play on the right day. What happened to Tuesday? You fall asleep. Oh, hey, uh... There's the two guys out in the hall. They want to see you. What two guys? The two guys in the hall. They come from uh, some relief organization. Uh, I'm going to give them 15 bucks. I pay anybody 15 bucks, they better give me relief. It's for the refugees. I don't need no refugees. Refugees need the money. My Ned. So you give? I give. So you're a chump. I'm a chump. That's right, you're a chumper. I'm a chumper, and you don't even know what day it is. I may not know what day it is, but I don't stick my teeth in no garbage disposal either. You, you, you're cheap escaped. I don't want to have no more to do with you. That's fine, because I want nothing more to do with you either. Fine? Then fine. Finito. Good riddance to bad rubbish. <laughs> what time are we eating? Half an hour, and if you're late, then throw it away. <laughs> And that job out again. Oh, Mr. Lizio. And don't slam the door! Mr. Clancy, I'd like to... Mr. Lizio, what happened? You talking to him, I can't. He don't even know what day it is. One of life's little distractions. Don't let it get you down. Actually, my toe is feeling better. That's cute. That's cute. Yeah. Clancy, my name is Jonathan Smith. This is Mark Gordon. We're with the International Refugee Relief. Yeah, well, you go see my former friend there, Mr. Lizio, across the hall. He's the chump, not me. Hey, you're cheap escaped. You can't squeeze no blood from a pig's ear. I'll give you a pig's ear. You guys knock it off. We're not here for a donation. You're not? No. Well, how come he was going to take my money? Because it's a scam. I told you that Mr. before. Mr. Clancy, Mr. Clancy, it is not a scam. Now, what I have to say to you is very personal and very private. I'd rather not do it out here in the hall. You got something to say, say it. It's about your son. Could we come inside and sit down? My son? Hey, wait a minute. What are you guys are trying to pull here? Clancy's a boy. He got killed 13 years ago. I know that, Mr. Lizio. You recognize this? Well, yeah. That's my boy, St. Christopher. His mother gave it to him when he was shipping out for good luck. Where'd you get this? From the woman he gave it to. Mr. Clancy, don't come inside. I want you to tell me what this is all about, and I want you to tell me right now. It's about a boy named Michael Clancy Nguyen. He's your grandson. Mr. Clancy, is that a picture of your son? Yeah. Yeah, this is my boy. It's Mike. We have some letters that the woman in that photograph says were written to her by your son. Is that your boy's handwriting? Yeah, it looks like it. So what? What's it got to do with me? Your son was killed in April. In July, a girl in that picture gave birth to a baby boy. Your grandson. They're in Thailand in a refugee camp. They want to come to the United States, but they need a sponsor. You got it! What? What? I was speaking English, wasn't I? 
Go on. You get out of here. But uh, Clancy, if it's your grander kid, you stay out of this. My kid's a lonely GI, so he latches onto some broad over there who's probably been sleeping with half the U.S. Army, and she plays it for a chump, and he thinks it's his. Well, I'm no chump. You hear that? Mike Clancy ain't nobody's chump. Mr. Clancy, she didn't work in a bar. She was a student, and she was in love with your son. We have letters he's written to his commanding officer asking if he could marry her and bring her over. Look, I'll leave the file with you. You can go over it. The boy's name is Michael. She named him after your son. I said get out! Come on, now! You get out! I've left the address of where we're staying. Please read the file. You're the only one they have. Goodbye, sir. Jonathan Smith, one of your caseworkers. Hello. And you must be Michael. Michael, this is your grandfather. I can never repay you for what you have done for me and my son. Thank you. Yeah, well, hey, well, you don't want to be doing that. I'm not any bishop or anything. Anyway, welcome to America. Let's get your stuff and let's go. Are you really my grandfather? Well, that's what your mother says. Mr. Clancy. What? Nothing. We will get our things. Now, this is for use. You, you two will have to share this. This is our room? Yeah. I don't know what you expected, but I ain't no millionaire, you know. I mean, that's what there is. You take it or leave it, you know? Mr. Clancy, my son has been raised in rooms with 14 other people, and they were not really rooms. They were tents and tin shanties. He was not complaining. He has never known such luxury as a bed in which only he sleeps. We are both very grateful. Yeah, well, uh, okay, then. Uh, there's a bathroom there. Can I see it, Mother? Ask your grandfather. May I, Grandfather? Yeah, sure. Uh, listen, don't call me Grandfather, huh? Just call me Clancy, okay? But why? Well, because I know I'm Clancy. I don't know I'm your Grandfather. Mr. Clancy. I appreciate very much what you have done for us. My son has not had anything in his life. The only things he has had are my love and the knowledge of who he is. Rooms we can do without, bathrooms we can do without, and food we have done without. But I will not let anyone try to rob my son of who he is, not even his grandfather. Uh, Mr. Smith, uh, can I, uh, I talk to you alone here for a second here? Sure. Mark, why don't you take Lane and Michael down to the beach? They'd probably like to see that, huh? Hey, would you like that? I'd rather see the bathroom. Later, Michael. Let's go with Mr. Gordon down to the beach. Yeah, come on, you're gonna love it. Okay. What's on your mind? Listen, Smith, this ain't gonna work out. I was willing to help out because my son had feelings for this woman. But I won't put up with this in my house. Put up with what? I mean, she's got some mouth, don't she? I thought these women were supposed to be, you know, 
Barwin and yes, sir, and no, sir. She didn't come here to be your maid, you know. Now, she's not here to talk to me like that in my own house, either. Now, she ain't gonna pull the wool over my eyes with all that eye flute and talk. I know exactly what kind of woman she is. Are you through, Mr. Clancy? Yeah, I expect that's about it. Well, then let me tell you something. She gave birth to that boy after the fall of Saigon. That child was living proof to the North Vietnamese that she had committed the most unpardonable of sins. She consorted with the enemy. The boy was marked mixed blood, but she wasn't marked. All she had to do was give up that child and she could have lived a much easier life, but she didn't. Because she loved her son and she loved your son. And that's the kind of woman she is. Mark and Michael. Michael wanted to see an American bathroom and the neighbor, I, I don't remember his name. Guido. Guido. He let him in and let him flush the toilet. My son is very impressed with toilets that flush. <laughs> it's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. Yes. No reason to forgive anything. I should not be crying on such a day. We are in America finally. This is not a day to be crying. We are very grateful. Diane, I know you're grateful. I also know what Mr. Clancy sent you upstairs was very cruel and it hurt you very much. I thought it would be different. I was foolish to think that. He is very much like my own father. It would shock him how much he is like my father. What do you mean? According to my father, all American GIs were exactly alike. Just out to use Vietnamese girls. He thought of Michael in much the same way as Michael's father thinks of me. Ironic, isn't it? Where is he now? Dead. He told me I must choose between my American and my family. I never saw him again. Later, in the camps, I heard he, my mother, my sister, all dead. Man, I don't think Mr. Clancy's a bad man. I think he just needs a little time, that's all. I don't know. In the camps, no matter how bad it was outside, when we were in our hut, my son and I, there was as much love as there was hatred outside. We could survive the hatred because of the love we had at home. But if the hatred is not outside anymore, but in our own home. How will my son survive that? How?
kid. You. I'm talking to you. You're a new kid, right? Yes. That's why I'm gonna let you off easy this time. Let me off? That's right. You didn't pay no tax this morning. Everybody gotta pay tax, man. Which tax? The tax, so I don't dump on your head. Dollar fifty every morning. That's what you pay. But I don't have such money. <laughs> hey, man. Don't lie to me. Seen you on the lunch line. You got the money. You're getting it from your old grandpa Clancy, right? <laughs> See, word travels fast in this neighborhood. But that is my lunch money. Yeah, well, from now on, you're in a diet. Because if you don't pay, we're going to have to thump on you a little. And if you think that your old man can protect you, maybe we thump on him too. You got it? I said, you got it? Yes. Hey, man, don't take it so hard. Everybody got to pay tax. It's America, right? <laughs> There you go. Oh, good old child. Get everything on the list? Yeah, I think so. Boy, I've been waiting to start this stew all day long. I am really getting sick of eating fast food. Let me just sit there. Who? Lan and Clancy and Michael. What do they got to do with my stew? What's your stew got to do with our assignment? I'm talking about Lan and Clancy and Michael. No, you weren't. You may have been thinking about them, but you weren't talking about them. I was just talking about them. I just told you. They just sit there in the apartment. Lan and Michael sit in their room, and Clancy sits in his room. They don't even talk. You ever got the oregano? What? The oregano, and there's no chili pepper, and there's no bell peppers here. I mean, if you're not going to get everything on the list, why don't you say so? I could have gone myself. Oh, come on, what are you mumbling about? I am mumbling because I'm hungry. I always mumble when I'm hungry. I am not an angel. I have a human stomach. Yeah, well, that's your opinion. Oh, that's cute, Jonathan. That's cute. Hey, look, I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. Oh. <laughs> you know what? You and me, right now, we were sounding like Clancy and Guido. <laughs> Was that what it's going to be like 20 years from now when we really get old? Hey, speak for yourself. I'm as old as I'm going to get, remember? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I forgot that. <sighs> hey, maybe that's it. Maybe that's what? Well, we've been trying to get to Clancy through his grandson. Maybe we ought to be going through his friend. Guido? Yeah. Yeah, Guido. You want to apologize or come in? If not, take Ike. Guido, you should be at... Oh, I thought you was at that bum of Clancy. Uh, you cheap escaped! Uh, it's all right if I come in? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Come on in. Come in. Uh, uh, I'm a kind of stir-crazy, you know? Uh, excuse me, but uh, it's no good to be uh, uh, all alone all the time, you know? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. You and Clancy have another fight, huh? Oh, yeah. Just because I give the kid to Michael, you know? I give the kid a backpack for the school, you know? And uh, every kid uh, should have a backpack, you know, just like I see all the kids around here. Oh, Clancy, that the bum, he say, Hey, how much you pay for that tobacco pack? I say, who cares? He said, oh, he cares. He say, I owe him a ten of bucks from the pinnacle of game, and before I buy a pack of pack, uh, I should pay up. I say, hey, if you wasn't a such a cheap skate, <laughs> I would not have to buy him what he should buy him, you know? His grandkid. Listen, um, Clancy's not getting along too well with a kid either, you know? Uh, yeah, I know, but uh, it's uh, not my business, so you know. Well, maybe it can be your business. What do you mean? Well, you see, 
part of our job, Jonathan and me, is to see that the kid gets kind of adapted to American culture. Uh-huh. So? So, Clancy is sitting over there like a lump. Because he is a lump. You jerk! Right. But see, none of that's doing the kid any good, or the mother either. I mean, they don't know anybody around here. I mean, she's off all day long looking for a job. The kid is at school. He comes home and just stays in his room. So we figure it would be better for him if he could get out, you know, have a little bit of fun, you know, toss a ball around, maybe go to the pier, ride a merry-go-round. So why don't you take him to the pier? I would, I would, but they need something else right now. They both do. I'm their caseworker. What they got to have right now is a friend. Hey, I got the news for you, friend. <laughs> Everybody needs a friend. Hey, it's a stinker to be all alone, you know? So? So what? So what's stopping you? Uh, I don't know, think Clancy would appreciate that, you know? So what? So what? So what? Yeah. Yeah, so what? <laughs> right. Oh! <laughs> who is it? Guido. Guido who? Guido the Welsher? You come to apologize, you better have ten bucks than you meant. Otherwise, get lost. I ain't no coming to see you. I come to see you, Granite Kid. Oh, you want to go out and play? Yes. Something like that. Excuse me. Hello, Mr. Ligio. Guido. Can I come in? Sure. <laughs> mm. Excuse me, eh? <laughs> Listen, kid. You and your mama want to come with me to the pier? We go right to the merry-go-round? Merry-round? You never seen a merry-go-round? It's a horse, wood horse, and it go round in a circle. Oh, it's more fun than a barrel of monkey. It has monkeys? Dear the Benedig, God bless you. <laughs> Come on, are we gonna have fun? Can we? It's very kind, but. But what? Come on with Uncle Guido. Well. I suppose. All right. <laughs> Come on. Here come the Bella Stagione. Grandfather, are you coming too? No. You want to go somewhere, go. If you don't wish us to go, we will not go. Hey, it's a free country. You can come and go as you please, you know? Ooh, the voice of a charm and a culture has just spoke. Come on. Grandfather would like to bury one for him? Hey, I don't know about a bear, but stuff to stuff the rat would be more his style. <laughs> hey, listen, why don't you two come in? I got some ice cream and uh... look, I know have this much fun for years, and I don't want to see an end. We should invite Mr. Clancy. 
an edge. I'd rather chew a razor blade, but hey, if that's what you want, okay. Come on in, I go get him, huh? <laughs> Hey, Flance, what are you doing here? I was just a coming up. A... Hey, what are those? Both of you guys are such pals. You buy the kid backpacks, take him on a merry-go-round. Both of you guys as immigrants, what's well, got to stick together. So you be responsible for them. You take care of them. Because I want nothing to do with you. Not any one of you. I don't need nothing from anyone, you hear? I don't need anybody. This is Bob Michael Nguyen. I understand you're his caseworkers. Anything wrong? Some of the teachers have noticed Michael going through the garbage can at lunchtime. The garbage? Now, I did some checking, and he seems that he does this every day. He either scrounges around through the trash can, or he just doesn't eat. Now, what's his guardian like, this Mr. Clancy? I'm sure he gives the boy lunch money. I mean, he's tight, but he's not inhuman. Well, something's happening to the money. I tried talking to him about it, but he wouldn't say a word. If you'd like to try, you can catch him before tomorrow morning. We'll do that. Thank you. Look, uh, don't you worry about it. I know Clancy for 40 years. He's, uh, <laughs> but uh, he cool off. No. He doesn't want us. He hasn't wanted us from the beginning. But why? Why is he like that? Because he's a jerk. That's who I... I mean, I love the guy, but I can't stand him. <laughs> Get your things, Michael. We'll find a place. I got a room. You take my room. I sleep on a day bed. No. That's very kind. But we will make our own arrangements. I don't do this out of no kindness. You know, I have a, a fun day. It was um, nice. And, and I never had no kid before. I, I want the kid, but. I never had one. Mr. Ligio. Guido. Guido. I don't say these things to offend you, but my son and I are not a burden to be transferred from one man to another. Mr. Clancy cannot give us to you. Lan, I know to this out of no pity. Or because Clancy gave you both to me? I know I'm not the blood. Um, what was it? Yeah, I'm a relation. Uh, relation. But I figured it takes more than a blood connection to make a family. I'm a lonely man. And all I have uh, till you come was uh, card games with Clancy. And we fight all the time. Only because we're both lonely old men. Only he's too cavalost, hard ahead to admit. I have a fun today. And I figure we can have more fun if we go out and eat together. Go to the ball games. Play checkers. Be friends. I know we're not the family, but we could be almost like a family. You ain't got to nobody. I ain't got to nobody. But people got to have somebody. 
So, why don't you give a try? Two, three days? Please? Can we, Mother? I had fun, too. You did? Yeah, I had fun. As soon as I get a job, we'll pay you for the room. Good, good. And for what we eat. I'm sure, sure. All right. I had fun, too. to this. The kids' lunch money. How you doing, Michael? Hello, Mr. Smith, Mr. Gordon. Michael, did you give your lunch money to those kids over there? No. Look, Michael, you're living in a free country now. Those kids have no right to take your money. But if they do, you don't have to be afraid to ask for help. Who will help me? We will. Today? What about tomorrow and the day after that? You'll be gone. They'll be here. You can tell your teachers. And if they can't stop it, you can always tell the police. I will tell no one. I don't want troubles, and I don't want my grandfather to have trouble. You know how you survive, Mr. Smith? You keep quiet. So I will keep quiet. I have to go to school now. Come on, let's go rip the lips off those kids. Oh, hold it, he's right. Let's face it, what happens when we're gone? You can't just let them get away with it. I know that. Come on. When don't you let me, just one time. Mark. Yeah, I'm coming. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Hold your water. Not interested. Interested or not, you're going to talk to us. I finished with those two. You want to talk about them? Go see Guido. I gave them to him. What are you talking about? You gave them to him. That's right. I kicked them out. Just like I'm kicking you out. Now go on, amp straight. Mr. Clancy, are you aware that every day your grandson goes through the trash cans for his lunch? Trash cans? What are you talking about? I gave the kid his lunch money. And every day a gang of kids take it away from him. But why didn't he say something? Why didn't he fight back? It's because he's afraid. I'm not responsible if the kid's a coward. Oh, he wasn't afraid for himself. He didn't fight back because the kids said they'd do something to you. He was afraid for you. He'd rather read garbage than have them hurt his grandfather. I'm not his grandfather! Let me ask you a question. How many people in your life ever loved you as much as that little boy does? My, my son did. Well, your son's dead. Your grandson's alive. And after everything you've done to him, he still loves you that much. And you gave him away. Michael. Grandfather. Where's the kid's been taking your money? No one takes my money. But don't lie to me. I won't have any grandson of mine eating garbage on account of some punks. It was these guys, wasn't it? No. And you're not my grandfather. You even said so. So just leave me alone. Now you listen to me. 
I am your grandfather, and I don't want to have you lying to me. Now, it was them, wasn't it? Yes, but it doesn't matter. Please you don't... You stay here. I'll take care of this. You! You give that little kid his money back, you hear me? Hey, man, get your finger out of my face before I cut it off! Listen, I said you... Come on, let's go. No, no, just wait. Old man, you gonna get hurt. You leave my grandfather alone! Get your hands up, my grandson! Damn, the boss give him the stuff? No, I did. I didn't think he'd mind this time. <laughs> I like your style. <laughs> uh, yours too, of course. Michael, you okay? Yeah, are you? Yeah. How did we do that? I don't know. I mean... Maybe it's like, uh, you know, there's stories you hear. A mother sees her kid trapped under a car, and she loves that kid so much, she, she gets this superhuman strength and just lifts the car off. Maybe that's what it was. No. Why do you say that? Because you said such strength comes from love. Yeah, I did say that. Michael, I've been mad at you. I've been mad at everybody. But it's not because of anything you've done. You see, I love your daddy more than anything in the world. And when he got killed over there, it was, well, I, I acted like you got to get over it and move on. But you can't get over something like that. It's a pain, and it never leaves. So I tried to block everything out. And then you and your mom came along, and it made me remember him. And all that pain came back, and I didn't want to feel it. So I didn't want you around. Because every time I looked at you, I could see my Michael. <laughs> you know, you, you remind me an awful lot of him, kid. And when I look in your face, it's like I can see Michael looking back at me. So I, I tried to shut you out. Because if I didn't do that, I'd probably love you. And it hurt too much to do that. You understand? No. Ah, oh, neither do I. That's nice, you know? Reminds me of that line in that movie. So what movie? The one with Ryan O'Neal, where he says, uh, love means never having to understand. Say you're sorry. For what? It's the line in the movie, love means never having to say you're sorry. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Grandfather? Yeah, kid? Can Uncle Guido live with us, too? Uncle Guido? That bum? Yeah, that bum. I don't know. We'll think about it. Maybe it'd be cheaper to get one big place. We'll talk it over with your mom. Well, that bum Guido still owes me 10 bucks. He said you cheated him. I cheated him? Yeah, he says you always cheat at cards. He's seen her. That's what he said about you. Me? He's the one who put his teeth in the garbage disposal. <laughs> 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 Thank you.